Hello, it's Susan here and welcome to another one of my tutorials. Uh, this tutorial is a little bit different uh, today as you'll see as I'm doing this dish and it's a little bit different shape so you will see a slight change to how I've done the tutorial but I, uh, I hope you enjoy it either way and uh, I hope you can put up with a little bit of my um, ramblings today. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Here's the picture of the paints that I used and the two stencils that I've used in the video. I will provide links to the Happy Dotting Company for these stencils down below uh, for your reference. And now on to the video that I recorded previously. Hi guys, it's uh, Susan here and I'm going to film uh, and hopefully give instruction here <laughs> on uh, this trinket bowl that I've just painted with two coats of black gesso. And this uh, bowl uh, came from Devon Dotting and I'll put the link for this uh, in the description of my video below. So if you'd like to make your own, you can. Um, <clears throat> let me see. So it's about six inches across and it is about one and a half inches high and it's one of my favorite shapes to paint on and if anybody follows my Instagram page you'll see I've posted quite a few um, of my uh, bowls on there. So I'm making this one special for a friend of mine and uh, she said it's okay if I Go ahead and make a tutorial for it. So I'm going to start that now. So part of the problems I've found uh, is trying to find a center of um, a curved surface, which um, pretty much what I do is I use the um, small flexible uh, silicone stencil from the Happy Dotting Company. And I will also put a link to this in the description of the video below. And so it's basically, I, I try to eyeball it first. And I'll just mark the Swiss, where I think, think the center is. Sorry guys, I'm a little bit tired. I've been dealing with uh, quite a bit in the last two weeks. So I'm a little bit on the overdone side. <laughs> but I need, I want to get on this. So. So what I do is I put a mark and I, so it's three, three and a half there. And then I kind of just rotate it around and, and that's three and a half. And I do a quarter turn, three and a half on the other side. Well, look at that right off the get go. I got that straight. How often does that happen? Like, never. Okay, <clears throat> now for doing the spiral design, I want to have eight sections. So I'm just uh, going to mark these out and I'll be right back. All right, <clears throat> there's some messy looking grid lines. Uh, the other thing I do next is I'm just going to take my little measuring tape here and line it up and I'm just going to mark the rest of my line there. I'm marking it up. Um, I'll mark them up here so when I carry the pattern around the, the other side I have a, a rough guideline. I find uh, with curved surfaces, it's really hard to get perfection with my grid lines, like my layout. Um, but in the end, it, it, you usually can't tell if I've gone a little bit off. <laughs> I just do the best I can. 
and uh, hope for the best. Okay, yeah, my my last couple of weeks have been a little bit of a nightmare. Um, some of you may know I have a, a couple of medical conditions, and one of them is an autoimmune condition called Bichette's. And uh, not last week, but the week before, it just I just got a really bad flare up, and what that looks like is it's like if you've ever had the flu where all your joints and your body aches. You just kind of wake up that way and and that's what happened last a week so I they put me on steroids and it makes it all better wish I could stay on the steroids I tell you I actually feel human when I'm on them but long term they're not good and then what happened at the end of that is my little kitty broke her back leg and uh, which required some extensive surgery and a very major vet bill that will uh, take me a while to recover from. Uh, $6,500 to be exact. So, I mean, the good news is I have pet insurance on my dog, but not my cats. And that's another story. So, anybody considering getting insurance, I would say yes. Go for it because it pays off for itself. So between caring for a brand new three-month-old puppy, I'm administering meds and confining a kitty, and and this is the only thing painting that gives me a little bit of respite. And with my husband working and he was on call, I I didn't really get much chance to do that. So I felt a little, whoops, like I was going a little bit crazy. And I'm sure you all can relate to having those kind of feelings where I just want to escape into my studio and paint because it makes me feel good. Distracting, I guess, you know, distraction. So, puppy is having a nap right now. And I am going to start my project. This might take me a few days, I'd say, um, mainly because I won't be able to sit for long periods to paint this, um, you know, given what I have going on. But that's okay. It's probably better just to take some rests. So that's my life in a nutshell lately. I'm sure you all can relate to times in your life like that. And uh, this is why I have painting to save my soul. <laughs> okay, so there is my layout. Like I said, it doesn't have to be beautiful. It just has to be a general guide. For what I'm doing, I found the most important um, is the initial setup. So what you're going to need are eight colors. And so I have my handy dandy tray here. We're marked at one to eight. Just forget those, I carried on by mistake. And I'm gonna be making a gradient. Um, my friend really likes greens. So I'm gonna do a bunch of greens into a little bit of blue. And uh, this is where you can do whatever you like. If you like um, reds into pinks or purples into blues. Um, greens, reds into oranges and yep excuse me, yellows, there's so much you can do, or you can just do a, a rainbow, which looks really pretty. Um, it'll it'll just repeat in a spiral, be very nice. You can also start with a darker color in the center and then gradually add white so that it lightens out the further you get. Uh, possibilities are endless. So let's see where this one takes us. I'm going to um, really like this folk art bright green and I thought that would be a good starting point and I also really like this peacock blue I can probably lighten this one up and it'll be a really pretty blue and then the two of them together will make some really pretty aqua teal colors 
And so, and then I thought to add a little bit of glamour to it afterwards with some top dots of some sort. I really like using these uh, naturalist, naturalist paints. Um, they're a different type of paint. They're almost like a glaze uh, when they they dry very, very shiny and a little bit of a hard surface on it. It's really, they're really neat. Um, they're great for like doing a general surface color, a couple of coats or top dots. Uh, haven't done a lot with just straight dotting with them, mainly because of the consistency. So those are the ones I picked for today and we'll see see how those turn out. I've got my favorite gold, iridescent gold in deep fine by Golden. It's getting low. I need to get some more of that. Definitely worth worth the money for that. And then um, again, Golden titanium white. I like this because it's very, very opaque and uh, chain. you don't need very much to lighten things up. So that's what I'm going to start with. Okay, so next I'm going to mix up my paints. So I probably won't film this whole thing because no matter what I do here, um, it will your paint will turn out completely different. Uh, there's no exact uh, formula that I, that I can give you to absolutely replicate what I'm doing, but I'll give you the general idea of how I start with this. Um, and add a bit more there. I also need to make a lot of this paint um, because I'm going to need the colors for the side of my project as well. And uh, let's see here. So as you can see, it's a little bit of guesswork. <laughs> In some cases, you might actually add too much, but everything is fixable. All right, so I think because I want this to have more greens in it, um, I'm just going to leave the last ones. And I really won't know until I start mixing these things up. So let's make guys a little lighter. And I'll also be adding some boring medium. You kind of feel a little bit like a, a chemist when you do this. Or a baker, maybe that's a better, better way of baking for people who like to do a dash of this, a dash of that. Kind of reminds me a little bit of that. Um, the Craft Smart, I don't need the pouring medium, only the folk art, because as you can see it, they look like little sluggy things there. So I like these little stir sticks. They're meant for, I think they're meant for powders, like nail powders and stuff. I just like them because they're easy to clean.
All right, I'm going to show you the setup here and how I do this. And I will probably not um, go regular speed through the rest of the video, uh, mainly because each step is exactly the same, um, just offset by one, which I'll show you here in a minute. Um, so I start off, I'm using the DIY Mandela Stone Dotting Tools. And a link for those will be down in my video below for those that do not have these tools. They are my favorite. Uh, it's not to say I don't use my other ones that I have, um, but uh, these are my go-to for sure. So uh, we're doing eight colors. So each section of this pie will have four dots of one color. And just for for me to set it up, I kind of always place my first dot on the line. Um, depending on the paint and my day, I sometimes have to redo this whole line depending on how big my dots are if they're not lining up. So if that happens to you, just know that, that that's totally fine. Um, it happens to all of us. Uh, sometimes I use a four and then they get a bit crowded. So if the paint's a bit thicker. So I think these are a little on the thinner side. So let's see how we do. I'm going to just start off right on that first circle. And then the last one should end just before the grid line like that. And if we can keep it like that for each section, uh, I think we'll be well on our way. Let's cross our fingers, okay? And not bang into my thing here. All right, so back again on the line. to number color three you can maybe see why I labeled my tray to sort of help keep keep me going and going in the right direction <laughs> okay now we're on to color four sagey color. I like this one. Now we're going into my blues. a bit of I added a bit of black to my first and last colors just to um, give them a bit more depth for tone um, that's just a personal preference for me Okay, 
And there we go. So there's my gradient. So it goes from a dark green here into a light green, and then into the sages, and into blue. What do you think of that? So then I um, will turn it down here, and this is where I'm going to be starting my next section. And I'm going to have the swirl go this way on this one, or you can go this way, it doesn't really matter, it's whatever you want to try. So let me just zoom in here. And a handy dandy pointer somewhere here. Okay. So in this little space here is where we're going to start the next row. So it'll be one, two, three, four. And then we go one, two, three, four again. So the first green will be here. And, and then that will create the pattern swirling that way. I'm still using a three. The next row will probably bump it up to a four. I tip, tip my bowl like this just so I can see directly down my dotting tool for placement. There you go. And now we get color number two. Start one, two, three, and four. Oops, sorry. Color number three, so one, two, Doing that today, making you dizzy. So it's because I wanted to get a little zoomed in for you guys a bit. Okay, one, two. It's a little bit more spaced out on this side for some reason. Oops. So I just make my dots just a slightly bit bigger to fill in that bit of gap. Okay, and the last one. Okay, so there's the first two rows. And you basically, you do that 
all the way up and you'll really start to see the pattern at about, I don't know, pretty soon here. You can already sort of see it. I'll do one more row here with you and uh, we'll see. All right, so again, there's the beginning of your green dot and shift over by one. And I'm using a four here, a little bigger. You can see the two dots are really close there, so it's a good good size for. Um, I will be coming in and doing little dots in between, so I actually prefer that kind of distance on each for my little dots coming down the road, but we'll make it work. Lots of cleaning off the tool with this project. Every four dots, new color. If you forget to change a color, it's all right, just take it off. Wouldn't be the first person or the last person to do it. <laughs> Trust me, first learning this pattern myself, it was very easy to mix up. So if you get lost, you can just count four, four, and four, so you know it, you're on the fourth color. One, two, three. I'm sure there's some sort of mathematical way of figuring all this out, but I'm not mathy. Wing it. <laughs> and again. Okay, color five. Oops, you almost, almost did another one because I had color five in my head, so I was thinking five dots stopped myself. I really like these colors. You know, they they look a little different on the phone here, camera phone, but they're very pretty. All right, offset. One, Okay, so I'm going to carry on here and I will come back to you when I've got a more done up the sides here because it's very repetitive. You don't need to see me do that step by step, but I do know for those that like tool sizes, um, what, what I do is I place my tool there and I kind of envision it squishing out a little bit and I want them to be very close, but not touching. So to guess your next tool size, um, we just used a four. So I will probably use a five. And then I will probably go to a six or a seven. Once you get further out here, you'll find your tool sizes jump. Um, oops, they jump 
uh, up a lot higher. So you might go from a seven to like a nine or a 10. So, um, but I'll come back to you in a little bit. Okay, here's two more rows done and now you can start to see that fanning out look. And that was, uh, the last one I used was a six. Uh, so, I think the seven will be fine. So you just sort of dry dot it and see. And you keep doing that as you go along. Okay, now I've done a couple more rows. I used a seven and then an eight. Um, oops. And now you can really see that that pattern coming through. I did one once where then I changed directions so it was like a zigzag. It looked kind of neat. Uh, so my last color or um, tool was an eight. I think if I go with a nine, it's gonna be too small now because I'm starting to get a little bit gappy. So I think I'm gonna go with a 10 next. So this is where you start to kind of look at it and go, is my tool gonna be too small in there and really start creating big gaps? Um, um, that's what I like with these DIY. You have such a variety to get it just right. Like I'm thinking maybe even an 11. Uh, where's my 11? My 11. Yeah, I think I'll go with an 11 because it'll, it'll bring me to the center there. All right, so I'm going to take a break here, and we'll be back. Okay, I just did a couple little touch-ups here where I have a tendency to plop my finger in paint and put it on my bowl. <laughs> so it's the next day. Uh, I didn't get that much farther yesterday just due to life and puppies and cats and stuff. And it's about... 7.50 the next day. So I'm going to choose a number 11. I think that's the size that will work here. Let's just see here. Yep, I think that's good. Oops. Yeah, there. So you got a, a little teeny space between them. So when I go in and put details later, I'll still have some room. had one of those nights where all I could hear was snoring next door, so I didn't get a lot of sleep. A bit groggy today, so this is kind of a nice little break while puppy's sleeping to do a bit of painting and I'm sharing this with you. So, just carry on here. Hope you're um, following along okay. Um, just remember you're always welcome to post questions in the comments below. And I'm always uh, happy to help you to the best of my ability. And uh, carry on here. Didn't get enough paint on that one. I was able to fix it up though. I don't know about you guys, but I'm always a little bit shaky in the morning. As you can see, I don't know if you can see that. the joys of my body. Maybe I'm better after a couple of cups of coffee. I don't know. How about you guys? I heard someone say that they start off shaky, but as they get in 
dotting in their mandala, they are actually their shakes subside a bit. I think that's kind of interesting. Must be a brain thing. Well, I guess, you know, I find dotting relaxing, so maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. I sure like this next color. It's a pretty one. It's almost like a denim color. shaky. Well, today my puppy is going to meet a new doggy today. The lady who I'm making this bowl for has a, um, has a sweet doggy named Loki. And so they're going to have a play date today. That should be fun. This particular blue is a little bit thinner, so it made smaller dots. It goes to show it's the same size tool, but it made a smaller dot, and that's just simply paint consistency. All right, so that was an 11. I think we're going to still have to bump it up. I think a 12 is, well, let's see here. Let's see what a 13 would look like. If you can see that. I think a 13 would be better there. I can usually tell by the time I do my second dot here if I pick the right size. Yep, well, that's good. I mean, I might have been able to squeak a 14, but that's that's okay. All right, I'm going to carry on dotting that, and I'll come back to you in a minute. Okay, so that row is all done. I did the last one there, and I think I'm going to add one more row. And this one was a 16, so I think I'm just going to go up one with a 17. And see how we do here. All right. It's on quite a curve here, so it's a little harder to see. Yeah, 17 will be just fine. get back to you in a minute. All right, here we go. All done. This one green is a little bit on the thin side, so what I do, um, so it doesn't all pool at the bottom of the dot, I try to just shake it down so it kind of dries a little bit that way. <laughs> Come back this way. Anyway, so that's as far as I go up this bowl. That last tool size was a 17. And as I said before, I didn't want to bother you with watching me dot every single row because it's all so repetitive. Now, while I have my color tray out, um, I'm going to do the inside little detail and then I'm going to cover my tray up uh, so the paints don't dry because the next step I'm going to be doing a lot of gold and that'll take me a while. So I suggest you cover up your tray. Isn't that pretty? I love that gradient. 
in that swirl. So pretty. Okay, so here we have our little pie in the middle with the eight slots. You wanna find the middle of your pie and you're gonna swipe with the same color there, so it'll be the dark green to the center. And try and end on, on the center dot. We will be putting a gold dot over top of that later, but for now. So I'm using a one millimeter, roughly a one millimeter, not too big, because I'm gonna be putting gold swipes in there too. So I usually just dot it a little bit just to get a little puddle there, and then I pull it down. Hmm be a little bit thicker so because I want to carry that a little bit further I switch tools and pull it down it's not the most perfect one don't worry about that you just cover it up a lot has to do with paint consistency here so but that fixed up just fine knowing how to fix things up is half the battle don't need to remove it all and start again. Very rarely do I do that because I'm usually able to fix it up. Okay, let's give this one a shot. Now that line's a bit scratchy, so I'm just kind of to find the middle there. There, that's a little better. See, this paint was a little thinner, so I was able to pull down much easier. Still shaking. And this green was much, much thinner, so my, so my little swoop was a little bit more snail-like, slug-like. <laughs> but that's all right, it'll look fine. This goes to show paint consistency is so important. but not least. Okay, so now, yeah, my alignment is slightly off in here. I don't know what happened there. I think I'm going to move. This is the one time that I am going to move that one, that second green over a little bit. So it's a little more centered. And we'll see if we can get that looking a little bit better. trickier in here but we'll give it a go I probably will have yeah it's dried so I'm gonna have to come in with some black paint that's all right just smoothing this out taking out as much as I can not to have too much water on it so it doesn't puddle anywhere all right I think that'll be fine so I'll come back after I put some black paint on that and dry it okay and so I fixed that up and now I'm gonna come in with some gold just gonna... <laughs> yeah that would be Jasper Jasper thinks he's hungry, but he's not. So you can just get down, Jasper. There we go. Sorry about that. Cats will be cats. 
Okay, again with the one millimeter uh, dotting tool, just going to do a little swipe, swoosh, in the middle, fill in that space, and then I'm going to come in later with some micro dots, which are optional, because everything is optional here for me. Love this golden fluid with gold paint. All time favorite. I have lots of other golds, but I always seem to gravitate to this one. There we go. And then on the other end of my tool, I have about a three millimeter, which I'm going to load up well. And I'm just going to put a nice big center dot there, right on the top there. There. And you can put another dot on top of that later, a different color if you want, one of the greens or blues. I'll just leave it gold. So now I'm going to do just a little taper around all of these starting in the center and then just taper down into there. Um, there are a couple where it's a little wider but I'm just gonna stop stop about here just so that it looks consistent around and that you know unless you're a, a real master at this this gapping can happen quite frequently um, but when we get the gold in there you're not gonna see it. Um, it is hard on a curved surface no, I'm, I'm not the best daughter always in the morning, but we'll do our best here. So I'll try and get this in frame. So it's a one millimeter again here. I don't want to be doing really big dots because I'm just putting a little detail in. Try and get the same on each side. Not always doable, but we do the best we can. At least, you know, to close the gap there. All right, you get the idea. You can do that all the way around. Okay. So here we go, you can see, all the way around, looking good. So the next step, um, again, I'm not going to film the entire thing because it's very, very repetitive, but I'm just going to show you what you need to do. Um, I start with the one millimeter. Got it. One millimeter, and I'm going to be placing a dot uh, in this space. So here, here, and here, and then I kind of just walk the dot uh, to a certain point, and then I'm going to switch over to my smaller end. So you just keep adjusting the size of your dotting tool to the size of the space. Uh, eventually, if you even have a smaller end one like this, um, then you can do the little spots in here. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I start off, you know, if you want, you could probably put one here and here, but I don't think I'm going to have room down here, so that's why I'm just going to start there. You see, it's sort of like a little bit of a walk the dot, depending on how much paint you have on your tool. You could dip every single time to get them all the same size in there. And you can see, as long as you're putting a gold dot, 
in the little black spaces there. Okay, so that's what you're gonna do and you're gonna carry it right down to here. Okay, daughters, here we are. So I filled in all the little holes, all the little spots. If you think you missed one, it'll usually show up. You'll see a sort of a dark patch. Your eye will be drawn to it. <clears throat> okay, so now um, to finish this part of the project, I'm just gonna do little tapers from here to the center just to fill in that space. This is a 0.5, just like that. Well, I hope you managed to learn a new pattern here that you can adapt to make it your own and, and work with it, um, at least for the layout part and how to build upon that. And <clears throat> always welcome tutorial ideas and comments there. Or you can find me on my Facebook and send me a message. Susan Nelson Creations, and uh, same goes for Instagram. You can always message me there or comment. Hello. Okay, so here we go, and that's that. So I'm just going to let all of this dry now. Um, before I move on to uh, the next part, uh, do a bit of cleanup, and then I'm going to figure out what I want to do on the sides here. Okay, thanks. Okay, here we are. I have cleaned up uh, all the grid lines inside here, and touched up with my black paint anywhere. Um, <clears throat> my next step, uh, I'm not going to do my sparkles and stuff in there just yet, um, but what I am going to do is do this little edge here of the bowl. And all I'm going to do <clears throat> is, sorry, got the scratchies here, uh, is I'm just going to go through each color. I'm going to do three dots uh, and then change up the color. And I'm using uh, tool number five, and uh, we'll just do this. And you can do any kind of finish along this edge if you are dotting on one of these trinket bowls. Um, but uh, this pattern can certainly be put onto any other kind of surface you have. This was uh, about six inches across here, um, so that's quite doable. Okay, I think I'll just uh, leave it at that and I'll come back when I'm done. Okay, I'm not quite done, but I just wanted to show you. So uh, that's one uh, go through with the colors, and now I'm just going to repeat it. So just repeating this whole section again and again. Uh, as you get over to this edge, um, you just blend it in to the best that you can. Uh, if, you, if you need to take it down to two dots or whatever, you don't really notice it in the end. Uh, we'll see how it goes here. <clears throat> Getting green paint all over my hands. I don't know where it came from. 
All right, so I've got this little tiny section left here, and I have two colors left. So this is where I just see if they're going to fit. And it looks like I will probably get two of my last color in there. Let's see. There we go. So I'm not worrying about not having three there because it you just don't really notice it. So there we go. Okay, my next step, um, I'm just going to use my smaller dotting tool, which is the 0 0.5 millimeter that I've measured there. And I'm just going to put a gold dot on either side of those. I kind of just do it like that. Uh, I don't feel the need to dip each time because I have enough paint on my tool here to do that. All right. I'm not going to bore you by watching me do all those little tiny dots, but I'll come back in a bit. Okay, there we are. All done with that part. So next I'm just going to, to add a little bit of uh, extra shine to this um, using that paint I spoke about earlier. This is uh, gold green, lustrous gold green. And I'm not going to go overboard on this. I'm just going to add a line starting here and following it down here. Um, and we'll start with that and see if I want to add more. Uh, this last dot, I, I can't remember what size that was, but I'm just going to do uh, a 13 in there. And I'm going to tip the bowl like this because this paint oopsie, is a little bit runny. Um, I just don't want it to run down the piece. So, oh, that stuff's gorgeous. Same size tool will be fine there too. And then I'll gradually taper them down. I know my friend will really like this. She's just a lover of green. So because it's a bit runny, I'm just going to hold those there for a little bit until they get a film on them. And then I will uh, carry, carry on. Um, this spot is probably where the most curve is, so when I go like that, it these ones will be fine flat. Okay, I'll come back. Okay, I decided that I wanted to do this. Mat or these are dried now. I actually stopped last night and let it dry overnight just because I got busy with other things. But anyway, I've decided I'm going to do this metallic stripe on the first row of every color change. When I get over to the blues, I'm gonna change over to the, the blue-green and see what that looks like. Uh, so I'll just go to the green here. So I'll do four and then I'll do four of the other color. Um, but as I said before, this um, type of paint is, is very fluid, so I have to be very patient when um, doing these to allow them to dry so that they don't drip. But uh, as you can see, those dried very nicely and you can see such a beautiful shimmer, um, but it doesn't take away from the actual gradient at all. So that's what I'm going to do here. So this is my next, next row here and I'll just carry on with the same size that I used before. And then, this is my next one, 
see him. When I do this second one, I'm actually not pressing my tool down as much as I did the first one, just to make a little bit smaller dot. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, yeah, so instead of switching tools, you just use a little bit less pressure. Okay, I'm gonna let those two dry before I switch over to the other the other paint. Okay, so <clears throat> here we are. I went ahead and scaled my tools down and tapered down. Uh, I used a, I think a 10 and a 9. And then from there, I used a 3 millimeter and just did a little taper. Very, very easy. And you'll be able to do that too. Um, if you don't have these paints, um, you know, you certainly don't need to go out and spend a pile of money uh, and, and you know do them or buy them you can um, find these quite easily these are the dragonfly glazes and just a, a you know a top dot with these can really change the effect of a, uh, a piece you could use that there's a, a blue green one uh, there's a whole bunch of them. Lots of people have them. The other one, if I can find it here, which would be very, very nice. I think this is nice. Uh, is the Folk Art Extreme Glitter. And this is the hologram one. 2796. Uh, lots of people have access to this one as well. It's a plaid product, so it's... Um, you can find this at Walmart. And um, this particular one looks amazing on blues and greens. Uh, so you could use that as well. Um, so, you know, you've, you've got lots of options if you don't have a specific paint. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna let those dry. And um, I can also, I'm just gonna do a, so I'm very shaky this morning. So I'm just holding my hand here. <laughs> um, I'm going to do a little little tiny swoosh uh, with the glitter on top of the color there. And I'm going to do a little top dot there. So, uh, you know, I don't need to show you that. It's very simple. Just pick a smaller tool size, you know, embellish it. You don't have to do that, of course. Just make it your own and have fun with it. And when this is dry, we'll start, uh, we'll start doing the sides. One more little detail, of course, that's how I, I work. I just have an idea and I go with it. Um, there's lots going on in the middle here, so I wanted to draw the eye out a little bit. Uh, so what I did is I just took a one millimeter with the uh, blue-green glitter and I just placed a little dot right in the little crook there. So it just just draws the eye out a little bit and adds just a little little bit more detail. And when that dries, it'll be very, very pretty. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so here we are, all dry, and I'm moving on to the sides here. Um, if you're not painting on the trinket tray, then you could pretty much um, be done and this would fit nicely on a on another surface um, or even for that matter you could do it like on a tea light but that's just not doing the center but anyway what I've done here is I oh, hang on here. Uh, so I took my stencil from the happy dotting company and I just lined it up to the edges here because um, I had lost my grid lines just from handling. So I just redrew um, my grid lines just by marking the sides like that. And then you can kind of see them there here. So I'm just going to make a, um, 
a gold dot here, and then I'm going to just do the tapers in all the colors. Uh, so it'll be eight. So it should fill in this section quite a bit. And we'll see how it goes and down the side. Um, so it'll be every other one here. So it'll fill in this section here. I'm going to start with a 16, size 16 in gold. And see how it goes here. Be a little harder one here to film because of the shape of the of the bowl. So, oopsie, get that up like that. There we go. So, um, what I think I'll do is I'm just going to film just creating this one here just um, normally I'd probably go all the way around but just for the sake of filming this for you um, that might be the easiest okay <clears throat> I'm gonna use a dotting tool to start with and it's a two and a half millimeter and I'm gonna start from the outside edge outside of my colors like the dark blue and then I'm gonna work towards green Hmm. I think my paint's getting a little bit thick. There we go. So just do the one dot and then and these will be smaller. And now I'm gonna switch tools to a point five. There. So that's the first one. And then I'm going to use the next, next blue. So I started with the dark one and I'll go there. Hopefully it'll work. <laughs> we'll know soon enough here. So I want to bump up the size a little bit. <clears throat> and there's a three millimeter, it's a little bit bigger dotting tool. And I'm gonna do one dot on each side. Paint is a little bit on the thick side. And switch tools. Next tool size here, I think will be a six. And it's the next color. And then I'll do the three millimeter. can over dot just if you need to make the dot a little bit bigger. Hmm. 
that dot starts to get that size, I know I'm going to run out of paint and it'll get very sparse in here. So that's why I like to switch tools um, so that I can carry it up like that. is a seven. And I'm just using a five here on the other side. Just to create sort of that tapering down Three millimeter. Eight. And you see in this line going up, each one is getting a little bit bigger. And a five, so you get the idea. Just take your your numbers down each each one. And when I hit a five, then I know I can um, go transition into my stylus. And I'm not sure if I'm going to have room for three more, oops, three more in here, but we'll take it down to here with regard, you know, with whatever color of green we end up 
will be fine. So either way, you get that nice gradient. Yeah, so I'll have room for one more color. One more green. So it'll be seven tapers instead of eight. So that uh, tool size was a nine. You could go from green to blue. Um, I wanted to do blue to green because, again, I'm doing this for a friend and her favorite color is, is the green. So I want to make that the more prominent color here. And this is the seven. Six. That was the five. Okay, I'll do my tapers. Just move the object into a way that it's comfortable for dotting. Sure looks pretty. Now I'm being a little more careful when I put this down because I don't want the green to hit my my surface. <laughs> All right. So now I'm just looking to see where this line is. I don't want to go beyond that. So I think that's a ten, and that'll work just fine. A little bleed over there. Oh, my tools are getting messy. <laughs> Each tool size just drops um, after the previous, so like it was 10, 9, 8. That's what I'm on now. Oops, it's a little bit more. Yeah. Sorry, I keep going out of picture here. Not easy to do this and film at the same time. Hope you can appreciate that. <laughs>
Okay, now I would repeat this entire thing right here. And we'll go all the way around. So I'll come back when mine is all done. Just always keep in mind, I don't want to go beyond this little line here because then they're going to bleed into each other. So just try to keep your dots nice and tight. All right, come back in a bit. Okay, here we go. There you go, it looks so pretty. All right, so I kind of feel that it reminds me a little bit of a peacock feather or something like that. And I think it would be very nice to do sort of a peacock top dot on this part here. And then I'm gonna just do some gold details down here and I think we'll be done. So I'll come back and have a second here. Alrighty, I'm going to show you on this one here. I'm going to use a 10. So it's big but not massively big, just enough. Well, actually, I take that back. It needs to be a little bit bigger than a 10. Okay, 12. So I'm going to do a 12 and I'm going to use my darkest blue and I'm going to dot very high up like that. And then I'll do a couple more top dots on that to give that effect of a peacock. That one didn't lay down very nice. There we go. All right, I'll come back to you when those are all done and ready to paint the next level. All right, while those are drying, and I'm going to carefully do some gold here. This is a 12 in gold. And I'm going to find the center between these tapers. Just going to place that there like that. I'm just going to fill in this space a little bit with some gold. But you can see you want the um, all the dots around dry on these uh, curved surfaces so that you can handle your project without smearing the paint and that's where you have to be really patient and allow things to dry in between and I know that's hard for some people for me lately it's not so hard because I'm will let this go dry or I'll dry let me say that again I'll let this dry and then I'll go do some things like uh, take the dog out to the bathroom and see to my kitties and uh, get some rest for me. All right, we'll let that dry. All right, well, not totally dry, but I'm going to do uh, a uh, number six. Sorry, my nails are so ratty. Just been so busy. <laughs> Always a problem with me. Okay, so I'm going to put number six right in here. And right here, just like that. Yeah, that's hard for you to see this, but really there's no other way to do it. All right, be back in a second. And uh, I'm going to use a three millimeter. Just going to turn 
do a double dot here. And then my one millimeter. So you get that look. And I'll do that all the way around. And just to add the final little detail here, I'm going to try and position this so you can see. So it's my three, three ML, or millimeter, not ML. Just loading this up. Take it down. And it's a little bit of a fuzzy tail there, so I'm just And so that'll be what that looks like. And I'll just try to make sure I position that in the same spot all the way around. Okay, uh, I think my blue dots are dry enough now to put a green. And I'm using my um, green number four, the fourth in the series. It's a nice bright green to do this little dot and this is this is a seven there and then my final dot will be a little um, probably a gold one to finish that one off and when this uh, gold is dry I'll probably put a um, a green center dot there uh, with some sparkle all right, I'll be back. So for the center of this uh, gold dot, I'm gonna pick my number six, which is a sort of tealy blue here. Oops, sorry, hard to see. Um, this one here, so it's the third blue. And I'll just put a little uh, center dot there. There, there you go, like that. And then we'll go all the way around. And next I'm going to use the blue green C. And I'm placing that right here and here. And I'll be using a what's that? It's a two two millimeter. There, and then there. And when that's dry, it'll really, it'll really punch. And if you feel free, just do a little swoosh down there too. Okay. Okay. I've added a few other little details that are completely optional for you, and you just play around with your own design. Uh, sorry, I can't quite get it in focus there. So with my metallics, I just did a little center dot down the center of those. And on the gold, you can see I added just those little bits of shimmer in there. So I think the last step now is I'm just going to put a little kiss of gold. I'm trying to open up my paint thing here with one hand. Okay. Just a little kiss of gold right there and I'll, that'll be it and I'll come back in a minute well here we are all done I just want to thank you again for spending the time with me and watching one of my tutorials and I do really appreciate all the new subscriptions uh, you can get notification on when I do get uh, a new one posted up and again thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.